Hey there, happy day 1180 of what you up to now. Sharon Horn Nelson here documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar world of business to the online world of business. Thinking about and our idiom for supersize your business today was how do you get your foot in the door? How do you start? How do you get into something that you're interested in, that you're curious about? There's lots of different ways and I don't think I talked about all of them. Uh, you can do internships, you can volunteer, you can join clubs and organizations, you can go through people that you know, friends, family. Nowadays with social media, it's so easy to find somebody who knows somebody who can connect you with somebody to get your foot in the door, to get you started in any industry, any career, any business, any hobby, any endeavor that you're interested in, you can find somebody that can help you do that. We're all so much more closely connected with social media than we were before. It's so much easier to get in contact with people. Back when I started my career, I would have to call people. You'd have to call people on the phone or call a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend and introduce yourself and ask questions and see if they knew anybody that would know anybody that could help you get a start in a business or, or an endeavor that you were interested in. It's how we go about finding joint venture partners, partners in general, boards of directors, uh, mentors, coaches, mentees, whatever it is that we're looking for. So I'm curious how did you get your start? I've gotten my start in a lot of different ways, but in a lot of different industries. And I think initially I I called people and looked for people that I knew or people that knew people that I knew or through my school and my education, through uh, colleges and through friendships mostly or through clubs and associations because I belong to a lot of them as well. I met people that knew people that could help me find my next best step, the next best step for me in my career and in my life and in, in areas of interest. I joined Big Brothers Big Sisters because some people that I worked with were involved with Big Brothers Big Sisters. And I loved being a part of that. It was in a different area. I was away from my sisters and away from home. And so as a mentor in that, it was fun for me to help another little girl. Uh, <clears throat> and she, I was very different and I was raised very differently. And I had very different family experiences than she did. So I think it was good for her to see that everybody isn't in the system or in a system that she like her everybody's life wasn't like hers and that there was other possibilities uh, so there's lots of ways to get your foot in the door I would love if you would share below how you got started how how and why you got started in what you're doing now uh, a lot of people are doing different things now than they were a year ago because of COVID-19 lots of jobs have gone away lots of businesses have gone away never to return and there's hundreds of thousands of people saying okay that happened now what do I do what's next and that means there's a lot of people looking to get their foot in the door in things maybe that they've never done before or things that they were interested in 25 years ago before their business had to close during COVID-19 and is now not no longer viable they're not sure how they're ever gonna make up for a year of up and down closings and openings so love to talk more about this if this is a subject that people are interested in because there are a lot of really creative really fun really amazing ways to demonstrate and show who you are and what you can bring to an organization that will put you light years ahead of the 5,000 other candidates applying for a job or the 5,000 other people looking to find an opportunity for themselves so love to chat about that more if people are interested our get up and go challenge today was about we are finishing the P in the SOAP framework with respect to our financial health. And P stands for progress. How do we know if we're moving toward what we want or away from what we want? We have to have a way to measure that. So we talked about measurement. With finances, to me, it's some kind of a monetary measure because it's such an easy, subjective way to determine. I'm either adding to my um, amount of money that I'm trying to create or I'm subtracting from it. And there'll have to often be a few subtractions before we start the additions, right? When we're creating products, creating services, I'm creating an experience for people. Uh, so to create that experience will cause and will require some resources, time, energy, expenses, venues, uh, refreshments, supplies, uh, swag, things like that. But in the end, I'll know based on how much revenue I generate from that event what the net profit was from that. And that's the number, the measurement, the dollars that I'm looking for. The net after all has been said and done, after all has been paid. But you can choose any type of measurement you want. What we measure matters. What we measure only matters in that we pay attention to it. 
So we want to be a little careful in what we're choosing for measures so that we are getting the actual results we want. A lot of people, at least in the online world, just look at gross income, gross revenue, and they share those numbers proudly, but what they forget to do and they lead a lot of people astray is they forget to share, well, what, what do I really have to show for that? Yep, I made $10 million, but I got less than $100,000 to show for that. Or worse yet, I've got negative to show for that because I spent $12 million on advertising or $15 million on advertising to get that $10 million. So we need to be careful. And the marketers will continue to show those numbers in that way of representing information till the end of time. They have since the beginning of time, they will to the end of time. So we have to be, again, back to buyer beware, but observer beware. If you're looking for somebody to help you and model and move you in the direction you want to go, you need to make sure that they're really presenting the same results that you want to get. So I'd much rather follow the person that had a million dollars in sales and $900,000 of profit than the person that had $10 million of sale and 100000 or zero profit. It's up to you. That's a personal choice. That's the person that I'm going to listen to is the person with the excess in the, in the net part of the ball game. But it's up to us. We can do whatever we want. Uh, <clears throat> each of us. Our Do One Thing Every Day That Centers You, our 365 day challenge for 2021 was about meaningful things and what things mean to us is what gives them their worth or their value. Most people would look at my backdrop and they're like, what the heck? Teddy bears, I see a redheaded doll, I see a Wisconsin bow, I see some cards, what the heck is all that and what does it mean? It doesn't mean probably anything to other people, but it means something to me. I've been collecting teddy bears since I was a little girl. Always loved teddy bears, and I've pretty much gotten rid of all my teddy bears, but see, these are some of the ones that I recently got or that I uh, decided to collect. Christmas this year from one of my sisters, Valentine's Day, uh, and so I'll keep them around me for a while, and then I'll change my backdrop. I'll change the things that are important to me, but we need to surround ourselves with things that are important to us, that make us feel good. I surround myself with a lot of memory things. My granddaughter and I made these yesterday for birthday cards. They're on a pencil. And so instead of making a birthday card, she made her cousin, who turned 21 yesterday, a pencil so he could work on his exams. Now everything's online, but I didn't tell her that. It was just cute that she wanted to make him something. So those, I surround myself with things that mean something to me. Uh, you know, I've got my, my soap framework, my bars of soap, because the get up and go challenge means something near and dear to my heart. And so I want to have those things close to me. You don't have to. Some people are like, I can't stand clutter. I don't want anything around me. I want a plain white backdrop. Maybe I'll put a bookshelf in the background because that looks professional. I haven't read any of those books, but they're in my background, darn it. <laughs> I don't want to even go there. Uh, so true what people represent. And a lot of people in the world and online, not just online, but in the world, will show you only what they want you to see. Only a little bit, a tip of the iceberg. And most of us, as, as much as I think I'm a what you see is what you get, uh, not, I, you know, this is me and I'm out there. There are, I'm sure, totally crazy, stupid aspects of my life that nobody cares one whit about. And I'm certainly never going to make a video about it, right? I'm not ever going to show anybody how I do my makeup on a video. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. It's not pertinent to me. I can do old lady makeup. Yeah. Blind old lady makeup. Now that would be funny. Uh, <clears throat> I was laughing. My daughter said I should wear fake eyelashes. And I'm like, are you kidding? How would I get on fake eyelashes? I'd probably have one up here and one here in my videos. So I'm not going to do that. So those are some of the things I'm working on. I realize it is a week from today that I am out of town and traveling for several weeks. And so I have got to really light a fire under my tush and get things ready for traveling. I have not. I got to dig out a suitcase. I haven't traveled since 2019, given the pandemic and things. I really haven't been anywhere that would require any sort of travel. So I need to get my act together and start actually thinking about that and making that happen so that I am prepared and I have stuff ready. And I should clean up some of my other stuff so I don't leave a mess behind me. I hate, I don't really care about leaving a mess, but I hate coming home to an, a mess. So I want to have things clean and organized in the way I want them for when I come home. Maybe while I'm gone, I'll rethink my backdrop and I'll say, okay, well, what do I want to do? The problem is I got this comfy chair from my sister. It used to be uh, in my parents. I have two of them. They're fireside chairs that were in my parents' house. And 
I'm going to get them recovered when I pick a fabric that I like. But for right now, this fabric has a lot of sentimental value. These chairs have actually been recovered three times in my lifetime that I remember. For a while, they were black, with, or maybe it was olive with gold crushed velvety stuff. Birds, gold birds on it, and pears. It's my mother's taste, not mine, but they were fireside chairs in a beautiful room in the house that I grew up in, a family room with a giant fireplace. It was really a fun house. Uh, but I love these chairs because I used to sit in them and read as a, as a teenager by the fire, and so every time I sit in them, they give me a sense of surrounding yourself with things that are meaningful to us. This silly chair is meaningful to me, and it's super comfortable. It's a lot more comfortable than my last setup. So actually, my last one, two, three, four setups. So I'll change it when I decide to change it. Any input, any feedback, any ideas of what you'd like to see for a backdrop, please share them with me. I'd love that. All right, that's it. That's all I've got. I got a lot to do, so I invite you to ask me any questions that you might have. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow to let you know what I'm up to as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world and maybe a little bit back to the brick and mortar world. You never know what projects I'm working on. All right, have an awesome day. Bye.